Let's have some fun, shall we? Uh, a lady sent in her Ameriprise brokerage account statements for Roth IRAs. Let's examine this and see what we got. This will be a lot of fun. So uh, thanks for being on BART of the, the, the uh, YouTube channel. If you're interested and you like to support it, uh, hit the uh, smash button. That tells YouTube to uh, that you like the content. And theoretically, they'll share with other people. Comments. Uh, so do me a favor, actually. Uh, just put a comment down in the notes. Even a comment. So I'll ask you a question. And we'll start doing this more and just to get the more people to... Uh, to make active because YouTube, they're always changing their algorithm. I'm trying to keep up with the trend. Uh, so do you understand your brokerage account? Just put yes or no. Do you understand your brokerage account? Yes or no. So if you put down the comment, that'd help me immensely and it would help me with the YouTube algorithm as well. All right, so here's this lady on my YouTube channel. She goes, she couldn't figure out her Ameriprise statement. So she said, can you uh, look at it? And I said, sure. I, well, she didn't say, can you look at it? I said, send me it. Let's, uh, let's go over it. Now she uh, blocked out all that stuff. So that's good. All right, so she has two accounts totaling about $221,000. And what you see here is you've got cash, about $7,500. Fixed income, about $65,000. Stocks, about one thirty-eight, dollars And the alternatives, about $10,000. So what I like about this, a lot of accounts will say like stocks and mutual funds. So will say stocks, $50,000. Mutual funds, $50,000. And you're like, well, the mutual fund could be stock or bond. And I, 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 a lot of statements do that. I hate that. So I like this a lot. So good, good on Ameriprise for doing that. Um, and then we got these two accounts there. Uh, it's funny. So she has 11,000 and it's a Meriprise brokerage account. Then she has 207, actually 210, excuse me, and it's a Meriprise a strategic portfolio service advisor account. I bet you di donuts to dimes or whatever, donuts to dollars, to, I bet you dollars to donuts. <laughs> That she had one Ameriprise brokerage account, was paying commissions, and, and someone called her and talked her into moving the bulk of it to the Strategic Portfolio Service Advisor, which she's paying a fee for. I bet you dollars to donuts that's what happened. For some reason, they left 11000 in this other portfolio. I don't know why. Maybe for the five-year rule, it's the only thing I could possibly think. It's just odd that she has two accounts, and one, she's putting in 400 bucks a month. So one, she's basically maximizing her Roth contributions. The other one's just sitting there idle. Odd to be seen, both Roth IRA, Roth IRA. Interesting. And the one of the big account, uh, she have, she puts almost 5000 a year into. So I, I can almost guarantee you that's what happened. Here's a small Roth, about 11000 bucks. She has one ETF, the iShares Core Growth Allocation ETF. Uh, and that's it. So it's just odd to be that that's all by itself. Now here's the uh, Strategic Portfolio Service Advisor account. This is going to be fun. Investment time frame, 11 plus years. Her risk tolerance is moderate. Investment objective is growth with income and growth. That covers a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> Liquidity, seven plus years. It's just the whole thing. Right? The, your investment objective, growth with income and growth. Watch this one up here. Investment objective, growth of income, growth and income. So growth of income, then growth income. I mean, cover all sorts of areas there. All right. So here she uh, has 210 in here. All right. She's put in uh 1600 bucks for this year so far good on her uh she's made 1200 bucks in dividends and uh and she's made 100 bucks in other income and she's uh changing value she's up 19,000 for the year because the market took off like a bat out of hell which is wonderful i'm glad she did not get out and here's her way her portfolio is broken down uh, 4,800 in cash, about 100,000 mutual funds. We just talked about that. How the so they doing that differently here, but in the overall aggregate, I still like how they do it. Uh, 88,000 ETFs, uh, 6,000 bonds, and 12,000 preferred securities. All right. So now this is where it's going to get fun um, and frustrating, actually. All right. So I wish I could make this bigger. Can I make that? There's a, there's a way to make this bigger. I have to figure it out some other time. Um. Anyway. All right, so let's just scroll down, and uh, I want to show you something. So here we got Oak Tree Capital Growth LLC Preferred Units Rep Stag LLC International Perpetual Six Six and uh, Five Eighths or yeah Six and Five Eighths at Oak Slash A. I mean, I don't even know what that means. Oak Tree Capital Group LLC Preferred Units. I don't know if that's a preferred stock. That's I mean, it's obviously a preferred stock. Perpetual LLC. Uh, I, I don't know. Is this a, a re? I have a sneaky suspicion it's a, a structured product. There you go. Less than one year till maturity. Uh, structured product. She put twenty five thousand in. I guarantee you she did. Um, well, no, wait. A market price twenty five. I should say. Excuse me. She put six thousand in. Uh, so she it traded at twenty five thousand bucks. I'd be twenty five dollars a share. I guarantee you. And now it's worth twenty five thirty five. 
Um, and she's going to get, I, I mean, just the whole thing is confusing as all could be. What is this? Who knows? This structured product means they're getting a commission on it. And I got no problem with that, but no one knows what these things are. They're selling it off this yield of 6.53. I have a sneaky suspicion it's a non-tradable REIT real estate investment trust. Uh, certainly it's not, a, it has no market. She can't exchange this. I can tell you that right now. A structured product generally means you can't, there's no open market to exchange it, which is why the ticker is OAK slash A. What, what does that mean? I don't know. All right. So now she's got some ETFs in here. Nothing wrong with these Vanguard ETFs. All good. I got no problem with that. Then she's got some mutual funds. Look at this. American Century, Fidelity Advisor, all this stuff right here. And we're going to talk about that here in just a second. So let's keep going down. She's got some more prefers, next uh, uh, energy, income cap, blah, blah, And again, these tickers are just odd. Public storage. Everybody's got public storage. Uh, it's got a yield of, you can't see that. Let me move this over. A yield of 5.08. And this other one's got a yield of 5.1. Um, public storage is in every single brokerage firm out there because they have, I, it's, I'm telling you, man, every single brokerage firm I've ever seen sells public storage. I just, uh, so these guys should not be holding themselves out as fiduciaries. I hope to, I hope to the good Lord they're not, because there's no way they should be holding themselves as fiduciaries. That, I mean, in and of itself, doesn't mean they're good, bad, or ugly. It just means they should not be, because public storage uh, is a stock. They got paid a commission for it. I don't care, but don't hold yourself out as a fiduciary if you're doing that. Uh, energy, again, some more uh, structure notes. Uh, I, again, again, I think 25 was the uh, I guarantee was the uh, initial price. Um, and I don't know how these things work. I, bet, I mean, I know how they work. I don't know how this specific one works, and I guarantee her broker does not either. All right, uh, so she made 400 bucks this month in Roth contributions. All right, so let's just keep going back here. Um, I want to show you. Let me make this. Let's see if I can't make this a little bit smaller, actually, so I can fit. Yeah, there we go. All right, so fees. Here we go. All right, so she got $261 of management fees so far this year. So what we're going to do, 261 times 12, She's paying $3,132 in management fees on a $221,000 account. So she's paying 1.5%. They rebated it a little 12B1 fee. So let's just take a look. And then she got an investments and in infrastructure support fee. Um, uh, so investments and in infrastructure support credit. What the hell is that? Does that mean they gave her the money back? But what is that? Why does that even have anything to do with her? But anyway, so they're rebating the 12 b one fee. All right, but that's her fee, $261. Uh, you would think that'd be it, right? So let's take a, a fun. This will be fun. All right. Um, uh, the Lord Abbott. So LBDFX, and that's a bond to venture class F. LBDFX, we'll just type in LBDFX. And let's see what Google tells us this fund is with an expense ratio of 0.69. So that is what she's paying on top. And this is a class F. So she is paying 0.69. Now that may or may not be without the 12B1 fee. I don't know. But either way, she's paying that fee on top of the other account, other fee that she has. Hold on just a second, which is right here. The uh, right $261. All right. All right, so look here. So if you have a, a symbol with five letters, that means you're paying extra fees. So let's go look. F H C I X, F H C I X. And anytime it says Fidelity Advisor, it means it's more expensive. F H C I X, Fidelity Advisor, a healthcare fund class I. She's paying 0.79 on top of uh, the $261 she's already paying. All right, you with me so far? Isn't that fantastic? Let's look at O O S Y X. O O S Y X, shall we? Uh, we're going to type in O O S Y X. That's the Oppenheimer Floating Rate Fund. Now, remember, the floating rate fund is a bond fund, O O S Y X. And if you're paying a uh, fee here of 0.88, isn't that fantastic? Uh, <laughs> I mean, the hits just keep coming. So let's keep going. Uh, what else? We, oh, let's look at Wells Fargo. WF Mix. WF Mix. Let's look at WF Mix. WF MIX and see what we're doing here. And she's paying 0.83. So at the end of the day, she's paying 1.14. We'll just say 1.5% because this is only 30 days in April. If it's 31 days, it'd probably be a little bit more. Plus, we'll say on average 0 0.65. It might even be more than that. So 1.5 plus 0.65. She is paying uh over two percent two point one percent in fees fantastic two point one did they disclose that she was gonna pay two point one percent fees i bet not i bet they did not disclose that ironically 
I don't see anything on the front page for fees either. I just see beginning value, net deposit withdrawals, <laughs> net with deposits and withdrawals. Well, that's not really withdrawals. Where are the fees coming from? Well, they're being withdrawn. Dividend, interest, and income, change in value, and changing. I don't see anything for fees on the front page. I don't see anything for fees here. And the irony of it all is that they get attacked. Your withdrawal for fees are tax-free. They don't have to pay taxes on your withdrawals, your broker, which I find to be absolutely ridiculous. If you want to solve the crisis for investment management fees, you make it taxable to you as ordinary income and wish to pay your investment advisor. And watch, watch the industry scream bloody murder. I, I would be, I would love, love to see that. It's one of the uh, pet peeves of mine. At least you no longer can write off management fees. So now it's going to be more and more geared towards taking it out from your IRA, which is nuts. Uh, so that's your statement. Uh, how about the holdings? I don't care. Fidelity Advisor, John Hancock, Warren Out. I mean, these are just, uh, look, man, we can look at these. The facts are we know for a fact fees are the number one determinant in prevent your, your success. That's, that's all there is to it. So when you're paying over 2%, you're not going to be successful relative to someone who's not. Will you be successful in the overall? It depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Are you trying to accomplish middling returns for high fees? Then yeah, you'll probably be successful here. Are you trying to accomplish the better returns for lower fees? Then this is not the account for you. It's just all there is to it. The nice thing is because it's an IRA, in this case, a Roth, you can move to anywhere you want without any taxes whatsoever. So uh, there you go, my friends. That's uh, that's how it works. Uh, you were seeing the income. Um, so just, uh, uh, okay, that's it. So I will just go back. If you have a investment account and you got funds in there that have five letters, all right, like these guys here, that means they're going to have their own fees on top of the fees that they're charging you. If they did not disclose that, you should find somebody else. I'm absolutely adamant about this. This is nuts. Five letters means it's a mutual fund, which means it has fees on top of the other fees. Are there fees on these iShares? Sure. E-F-F-A-V, but they're not going to be much. E-F-A-V, or not in the uh, ETF, sure. E-F-A-V. Let's take a look. I bet it won't be here. Uh, it doesn't say their fee because a fee is like uh, one or th five basis points or something like that. It's nuts. So, yeah, there are probably going to be some fees. It's not much, uh, whereas these other fees are bordering on 1%. Moral of the story, if you're paying fee and you have five letters in the, the accounts that you own, get out of there. That means you're paying twice. And if they haven't disclosed those twice, they haven't, they absolutely are not acting in your best interest or they would be happy to disclose them. I right, hope this helps. See you. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks, Dan.